Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You're watching our cloud school. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how to make a call to a REST API or Web API with Azure Data Factory as an activity. So we'll have a demonstration of the same using Azure Data Factory pipeline activity and the activity name is Web API. So let's look at the demonstration for the same. I'll be using this Data Factory pipeline for the demonstration. Now, as our demo is about making call to a web API, which means that we need a API, which we want to make a call to. And for that, uh, what I've done is I've created a logic app, which has got a HTTP trigger. And I'm just returning a unique response, which is a unique GUID every time someone makes a call to the web API instance, I'm returning a unique response from this particular HTTP triggered logic app. Just to show you a test, I'll go and click on the run and that will basically run my logic app. So I can make a call to this logic app is run as in payload, which is having the method type as an HTTP gate. I'm not going to pass any workload. So if I just copy this and paste it in the browser, I will see that I'm getting a unique response as an ID and the status as in success. So if I refresh again, again, a unique ID has been generated and every time it generates a unique GUID. So basically this is my web API. Let's say I want to make a call to this particular web API from my log Azure Data Factory pipeline. So how do I do that? Let's create a new pipeline, click new and within the pipeline in the general, you have the option as in web which is a activity type web and here under the settings of the web you have to specify the url which you would like to make a call to so this is the url which i'm going to copy because this is my web api url of course i can parameterize this particular url but that's the url name next you have to specify the http method deprivation like http get post what what type of method it is as our method is of http get so i'm going to provide the get method but in case if your method is of having let's say post type then you have to provide the request body as well because your post request may accept the request body which you may want to pass it right similarly if you have the web api which requires to use any authentication mechanism such as the basic authentication or system manage or client service uh, client certificate or the so this principal authentication, if that requires to be provided, you have to fill in that information from this provided information. As this example is just a simplest one, wherein we are just invoking a method, which is of type HTTP get. So I'm just going to choose the method type is in get, and I do not have to provide any information because the web request, which I'm using is not protected with some kind of authentication. Moving on, this is the advanced section wherein you can specify what kind of uh, integration runtime it is going to use, what is going to be the HTTP request timeout, do we want to use a synchronous pattern, any other link services data set, we want to use it. After that, you, you can simply validate the action, right? The validation is successfully, so what I can do is now, I can simply click on the debug option. So that it will run my pipeline with this web activity and this will make a call to the same url and i'm expecting the data to be returned from the activity type so let's wa wait for this pipeline run to be completed and as it is completed i'll click on this web output expand this and we will see that the output which we might have it so it says that the status is succeeded and this is what the ID has been returned. So this is what the data we have for from our pipeline run. Now have a look at if I can utilize the data which has been returned from this inside my set variable activity. So I'm going to create a new variable and see if I can gap the value of the data which has been returned by my web activity so i'm going to set 
or relationship between these two activity. Next, I'm going to use the dynamic content here. And you can see that I can use the output or the return value like this. So the activity, which is been a web activity, the output of the web activity, and then the pipeline return value or I can use the pipeline return value as an output as well. So let's rerun and see what exactly the output value it will have. And I will see if I can grab a value of output and then subsequently we can use those values for the down in your pipeline activities for to build the proper logic. So this time it has failed. The reason could be because the data type the data type of the variable so because our variable R is having the variable data type as in the object type or uh, the string type so it's not going to accept that i'll go to the pipeline and here what i'll do is i'll use the output let's see if that is going to work fine let's debug it okay so i was so, so this time it has run successfully and the reason it was failing the because I was using the return value instead of having the output as in the actual output and then dot ID, right? So this was it in the demonstration. The point is that you can use the web activity to make a call to the REST API where you can make a call to the REST certificate post or any other type of abbreviation. You can grab the result within your pipeline activity and then that result you can further down the line in the sub activities within your pipeline you can utilize it and you can entirely build your own logic and basically perform the end-to-end -end pipeline execution that is it in this video i hope you have found this useful if you have any suggestion for me to improve it better to create a to bring in the quality which you are looking for, please let me know your suggestion. If you if found it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.